question do you care to pose to our witnesses? I thank the chairman. Uh, I thank my friend for, from Virginia for bringing forward this important piece of legislation. Uh, I think as the gentleman knows, it is uh, impacting the entire country. Obviously, it's impacting Virginia, um, rural Virginia uh, in particular, where the gentleman hails from, but uh, also Texas uh, in fairly significant um, ways. Uh, just two weeks ago, I met with uh, three moms. There are three more moms of the dozens, probably hundreds now, that I've met with who have lost their children to fentanyl poisoning. Now, all of us are members of Congress have run across and met with constituents who have had this occur. What I would suggest to some of my colleagues from around the country, um, it's becoming a daily occurrence in Texas. Um, we've had five uh, children in Hayes County, where I live, just south, southwest of Austin, died from fentanyl poisoning since last August in the school district my children would go to were they not, were they not at a, um, a Christian school, which is where my wife and I have chosen to send our children after she and I were both public school educated K through law school. Um, in fact, the reason I was slightly delayed today was because my children had Ephesians Chapel today, where grades one through six recite all of Ephesians. Um, from memory, and it's a you know great day of celebration at the last week of school every year. My daughter's in sixth grade and recited chapter six as they do uh, as they go through all of Ephesians, and that that is why I'm late. I had to take the later flight after listening to the recitations. Um, but I can tell you, in talking to parents in public schools, private schools, throughout all of Texas, but predominantly and in the area that I represent, San Antonio, Austin. Uh, the Hill Country, uh, where my colleague, uh, Mr. Gonzalez in South Texas represents um, a lot of the small towns between the border and San Antonio, and he represents part of San Antonio. It's absolutely devastating families. Um, and it, it, it does, it slows, it shows no sign of abating. And I, I just wanted to make sure that, because I know there was some discussion here, I was getting some updates as I was coming in, that there was, you know, discussions about this being you know, carried out and perpetrated by, you know, evil and terrible Americans. I don't disagree with that. Uh, the, one of the moms I met with, that uh, their child, her, his, her child had had this sold to her child from, you know, a drug dealer there in, in, in Hayes County, an American. Um, we had an American citizen who was being paid by the cartels, an employee of the cartel to move human beings into smuggling, into a stash house when we busted them in Bernie, Texas, outside of San Antonio not long ago. And uh, that's what we see all of the time. However, what is missed in that is the extent of what I just said. You have an American citizen employee of a cartel. You have American citizens tied directly to cartels. Yes, very bad actors in America, but driven heavily by cartels. I assume the gentleman from Virginia who's introduced the legislation, and I thank him for doing so, is aware of the extent to which the uh, Chinese Communist Party is um, engaged in uh, uh, operating with cartels in Mexico to carry out uh, the movement of dangerous fentanyl in the United States, knowingly and intentionally, uh, including equipment sales to the cartels to print and make the pills in question, including um, you know, providing the precursor materials, which obviously you are trying to deal with in your legislation. Um, and I assume the gentleman uh, is aware, like I am, of that significant connection, number one. And second question, uh, I assume the gentleman is also aware of the extent to which Border Patrol is unable to fully patrol the border. Even right now, when the President of the United States stands up and says, it's better than, than you expected, he said. We still have 4,000 a day being processed. Which you remember that Jay Johnson said 1,000 a week was a crisis. And we have 4,000 a day being processed, Border Patrol processing people. They are unable to patrol between the ports of entry. So our knowledge of what is occurring and what is being trafficked between the ports of entry is pretty low. And again, those two questions, I assume the gentleman um, is aware of those things and would agree with those two points. I concur. 
Um, I wonder if either of the other witnesses have anything to add about the extent to which the Chinese Communist Party is uh, fully involved with cartels to move dangerous fentanyl into the United States and exploit our border, which is unable to be fully patrolled by Border Patrol in order to stop said flow of fentanyl into the United States. I would assume that the Chinese Communist Party will do whatever it can to undermine and kill us. True. I would agree. And to the extent to which our border is unable to be patrolled by Border Patrol, that that is, in fact, a national security risk and a direct uh, cause of harm to the American people if Border Patrol is unable to actually patrol the border to try to minimize and stop said flow of fentanyl into the United States. Would that not be a problem? I would ask all the witnesses. Well, one of the things that I was, was saying earlier, though, and that we had a discussion about is that this, there's nothing in this bill that increases funding for either treatment or enforcement. I mean, in my opinion, all the bill does is to continue the status quo, and it's not going to actually make a difference in terms of interdiction or overdose or deaths because it doesn't provide any additional funding for enforcement or treatment or any of those other things. Well, we just passed the HB2, which does, in fact, have additional resources for Border Patrol to be able to stop flow at the border, of course, tied to the policies, which would actually have an even dramatic, more dramatic impact on the border because we would, I don't know, what's it called, actually enforce the law, which would actually, you know, discourage people from flowing across the border. I wonder if the gentleman from Virginia has a response to the this bill won't do anything charge. Yeah, you know, and it's just not accurate. The bill does two things. One, it makes the, the current ban on analogs, uh, the scheduling of Schedule 1 on the analogs permanent. Uh, that stopped uh, both the Chinese sending over the, the, the refigured uh, chemistry, and it stops the cartels from using that refigured chemistry. It became unprofitable or not worth the time and effort to find the additional analogs because of the temporary ban. Making it a permanent ban will put that off the table forever and you'll take that out of the way. That frees up a lot of our, our Border Patrol agents and other law enforcement agents. They don't have to learn new tests for every analog. They just have to see if it tests positive for fentanyl. So while it doesn't have any money itself, it makes it cheaper permanently to enforce the current law. And then we have the whole research component, which may lead to some kind of a solution. It may not, but it allows the universities to do research on fentanyl analogs to see if there's any uh, medical efficacy to uh, having them and then creates a way to make it so that those can become usable I, for medic medicinal purposes. I appreciate the response of the gentleman. I assume the gentleman is aware of the numerous um, instances where obviously people are being killed by virtue of getting uh, drugs that have fentanyl laced in it, but they believe they were taking something else. Yeah, that's, that's a serious problem. Uh, that needs to be dealt with as well. Uh, and, and so, you know, as I told folks earlier, this is a building block. This is not the bill that's going to solve all the problems. I don't think we can have a single bill that solves all the problems. And then we got into a great dissertation that you would have enjoyed on uh, germaneness. <laughs> well, I, uh, I'm sad I missed that, but I no doubt with you in the room it was, uh, an you know, answered. And so... I just created more controversy, but that's typical. <laughs> well, look, I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to turn it over to, to my friend from New York. But I, look, I, I would just say, I mean, every single day in Texas, I mean, you say what you want about the politics of the border. Say what you want about, you know, what you want in terms of future immigration flow, what you want in terms of amnesty. What we're experiencing in Texas is an absolute devastation of our state and our people and our communities by virtue of the failure of the federal government to actually do its damn job and secure the border of the United States. That is an undebatable point. It is a fact. And we're taking it on the chin. And I can promise you, we, the people of Texas, aren't going to just sit back and keep taking it on the chin. We have something we're going to have to do about it. And we're starting to. DPS is sitting down at the border with razor wire and agents doing the job of the Border Patrol because the Border Patrol is not being allowed to do it because our people are dying. And I'm getting sick and damn tired of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle not giving a wit about not only our own people, but the rest of the states having to pick up for the fact that my Democratic colleagues refuse to actually give a rear, rat's rear end about what's happening to Texas.
Because if I have to read another headline in Bear County, right, of, well, we got fentanyl-laced issues, the DEA warning of the parties in Fiesta in April of 2023, Comal County, New Braunfels police seized 6,500 fentanyl-laced pills worth $195,000. Travis County, a thousand percent increase in fentanyl deaths in just four years. I could go through list after list after list, name after name after name, mother after mother after mother. And it is a direct correlation. I'm not saying it's the only issue, a direct correlation to a border left wide open and exploited for the Chinese Communist Party to work with cartels to endanger our people. And we should damn well do something about it. And I appreciate the gentleman from Virginia for taking one step forward to try to deal with this scourge. I yield back.